Okay, everyone, as you can see, I've got my mic, so you know it's going to be great. So anyways, what we're talking about today is really quick uh, counterintelligence, counterespionage, and covert operations. Um, so what I want to stress here is, that's why I got the KGB behind me, that's actually from a bar in Colombia, but it's not as easy as it seems. So who is actually good at covert operations and what are they? Well, covert operations is the idea that you go covert, but it's not the easiest thing. Human intelligence has gotten kind of sidelined recently to other types of intelligence, obviously Signet, uh, geospatial with all the big data, which we're gonna get into. So is human intelligence important? Yes, you have to have a certain, according to one of the uh, short videos, maternity instinct is very important. So they like women to do it, why? Well, women are considered much more innocuous than men. Uh, Anna Chapman was a spy, a very conventionally speaking, not to be misogynistic or anything like that, very conventionally speaking, attractive Russian woman, as you'll see in a short video, that was able to get good information. Uh, women, according to uh, a lot of analysts, like you'll see in the short video, are very good at this because they're not only seen, as I mentioned, innocuous, meaning non-threatening, but also there is this maternity instinct where people think, well, studies suggest, I should say, that uh, we as human beings, because the mother is the uh, breastfeeder, the primary caregiver, et cetera, that we put more credibility into women, that we basically will tell them more, they're easier to move up uh, uh, certain ladders in covert operations, that uh, they're actually used often. In fact, if you've taken another class from me, you might have noticed that in uh, one of the videos on terrorism, well, quote unquote terrorism, we all know it's an intersubjective understanding, or maybe freedom fighters in Algeria, they actually use the Algerian fighters, women to plant bombs because they thought women, well, they knew women, particularly Muslim women, weren't considered to be a threat or that they wouldn't carry out that kind of, um, operation because you know they're more docile. And back in the Algerian War in the 1950s, that was obviously a very big stereotype at the time, less so now. So women are very important for covert operations. Anna Chapman did a lot, but they did. The FBI did to its success break that spy ring of Russia. Everyone spies. Uh, and then you have counterespionage and uh, counterintelligence. Basically, the idea is to stop this kind of intelligence. It's very difficult. You never know who is spying. Robert Hansen is one of the uh, biggest cases, uh, as, as well as Aldrich Ames. Both were doing it, spying for not just the Soviet Union, but when the Soviet Union fell, Russia. So Russia was still involved in spying even after the fall of the Soviet Union in order to get information on the United States. So those two both went to prison and they both said this is completely, you know, monetary reasons. Uh, Robert Hansen was making a lot of money. He was a real scurrilous character. There's a good movie about him. But uh, these people were basically, you know, these the, they projected an image, kind of what Freud would call reaction formation, like the opposite image they were, like very conservative. I love America, etc. And here they are behind this kind of thin veneer of patriotism selling secrets to the Soviets and to the Russians. Obviously, the Soviets are different than the Russians. So you basically get uh, this for monetary reasons. Then you have other reasons like Anna Montes. Uh, she was giving information to Cuba because she thought the United States was being unfair to Cuba. It's not necessarily that, oh, you're a communist. But the United States has been pretty cruel to certain revolutionary movements like the Sandinistas of the 1980s. We committed an illegal war there. And some people started saying uh, Philip Agee is huge. He's a big one, too, that ended up dying in Cuba. He was a CIA uh, um, uh, double agent, basically giving information to Cuba uh, because some of these people started having a lot of doubts about the CIA and the family jewels. That is basically a lot of information was coming out in the 1970s that the United States was engaged in, you know, overthrowing Allende of, of, of Chile, overthrowing Jacobo Arbenz of Guatemala, who's democratically elected, uh, overthrowing Mossadegh uh, of Iran and reinstalling the Shah. So people started thinking, 
thinking twice about it and had sympathy for these groups and saying, well, the United States isn't doing that, uh, uh, doing them any service. So I'm going to start giving them information. And it's not that they're necessarily communists or anything like that. In fact, the Sandinistas weren't communists, but we were pretty brutal. We did. We supported death squads in El Salvador uh, and just a broad range of dictators uh, throughout the United States, Africa, obviously, Diem in Vietnam and other places. And all countries do it like the KGB behind us. You know, he they and right now, Russia with the invasion of the Ukraine, uh, they're supporting brutality. And I think a lot of people begin to turn on the government, people who are for forward thinking educated people are saying, well, this isn't fair. So Anna Montes was one and she was actually caught more recently. Uh, uh, and she was giving information to Cuba, not because she she's a communist, but she actually thought, you know, that we were doing Cuba harm and thought we were all one people. And now she sits in a prison, um, you know, but you got to see it from other people's points of view, because if you were in Russia right now and you saw the brutality of, say, the Chechen wars that Russia carried out and now in the Ukraine and you started giving them information, would you be a bad person? Well, now that we're against the Russians in, in this Ukraine crisis, you'd be considered a good person. So this is an intersubjective understanding of what espionage is, too. It's also very difficult. So you have money, you have ideological reasons you know you want to you, you don't agree with the policy but then you have other things which is 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 you have these kind of double uh, uh spies spies that like edward sagaro eduardo sagaro who i used to show uh, have an interview of him now i can't find it but he basically was a cuban spy for the united states and then giving back the information to cuba so it's very interesting how he was giving he was getting information from the CIA. The CIA thought, oh, he's one of us. He speaks English, et cetera. But he really loves his country. So he was actually giving the information back to Cuba. Uh, that's a very interesting uh, uh, thing. And the other I forget his name is slipping my mind. But there was a really good uh, uh, ex-Soviet, obviously not good to the Russians. I think they end up having him killed. But he was giving us information during the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, in order to help solve the Cuban Missile Crisis. And obviously, he's a hero in the United States, but not in Russia. So you have this. And then when you see Anna... Um, Chapman, who, you know, now is a superstar in Russia, she was basically collecting information on us. So you have this kind of covert operation. So when I was solicited by the CIA, uh, after I lived in Nicaragua eight years, ocho años, de mi vida, my life, and when I got back, they solicited me to be a, a, a political analyst. But, you know, I wanted my PhD and I had some issues as well with that kind of work because I you destabling governments or not. So this whole spy versus spy plays out. We've had Israeli spies in prison here, even though Israel uh, Israel is is our ally. Um, and can you trust spies? And that's another thing, you know, but it's very, very interesting on how this will continue. And one of the things that's interesting is the Ukrainian government now is really cracking down on the pro-Russian spies within the Ukraine, you'll see. But is this creating blowback, right? Because once you start, you know, cracking down on people, you think everyone's a spy and you start putting people in prison who aren't a spy, this can create blowback from your policy. But it's a very interesting thing. This is a KGB. I mean, we still live in it. In, in in, in a day where spy versus spy is a real thing. In fact, I say to my students, and I don't say this kiddingly, that um, I basically probably have had spies in my class because ASU is so big, right? If I were a spy, I would go to ASU, hang out uh, and meet people, et cetera. And spying, remember, isn't just this, you know, I'm doing it because I'm an evil person thing. It's actually, you know, you might love your country. There might be economic benefits to it. There's just a wide range of reasons why people spy and you know they were the cuban five they were actually spying on uh cubans in miami because a while back a man named posada carreles and orlando bosch another one uh committed uh acts of terrorism against cuba one being uh blowing up a plane of the fencing team so uh he's a hero in miami though so if i go there i'd probably get killed but uh he's long uh he passed away a while ago posada carreles but he basically blew up a plane coming from, I want to say, uh, Barbados uh, and the Cuban fencing team, the Olympic team that fences uh, was on it. And if they were innocent people and what the Cuban five was, they, they were here spying on them and then they were caught. So they see themselves obviously as heroes. Right. And we would see them as villain. Benedict Arnold, obviously 
was he was a, a villain because he was supporting the British who we beat. Woohoo. Uh, so basically spying has been going along a long time. Uh, I have uh, when I was in Nicaragua a lot, you know, you see people that are kind of spies. You think they might be spies, but they might not be. The CIA plants people like you saw in that Cuban video in Angola uh, when we don't have the wherewithal to go out and um, fight ourselves. So this is one of the things that you have to look at. Of course, the CIA would never solicit me to be uh, in covert operations because I would crack under pressure right away. They would just say, we're not giving you lunch. I'm saying, I'll tell you whatever you want to know because, you know, no lunch. I mean, that's torture. Uh, so, but anyways, this is something to think about in the spy game, Argentina, Chile. Uh, remember Pinochet had his own spy team. They found uh, Allende's former economist here in Washington, D.C. and killed him in a car bomb right out of a movie. So the Pinochet government of Chile committed an act of terrorism in our own capital you know, because he had spies looking for him. And that was a really good point I, I just wanted to make was about, you know, the covert action, counter espionage, counterintelligence, et cetera. It's still very much alive. And this is based on more human intelligence because people are actually trying to get information from other individuals or at least, uh, you know, making relationships and communicating that information. And you can get good information. This could be uh, anything about computers, anything about like new Nuclear weapons, obviously the Rosenberg. It's just a wide range of information that you get privy to and you send it back to your home country, either a state or non-state actor. Uh, I am not in the KGB, but I think I would be if they paid me enough. This is just the Russian bar in uh, Colombia. So take care, everyone. And I hope, uh, well, you take care and send me any emails or write in community forum about uh, if you have any questions on the class.